and welcome to week number six of the Zwift Racing League. I am Nathan Guerra, and it is time for the team time trial. Again, race number three of the team time trial, race number six overall in the Zwift Racing League. I'm joined by Dave Toll, my usual co-host for the WTRL TTT that has now come on over to the Premier League in this race number six. Dave, it's going to be awesome out on London today. I'm really stoked, Nathan, no doubt about it. 31 kilometers. This is the perfect team time trial course. It's right down the middle. We've got a big double bill for you today. We'll start with the men. And the big question is, who can beat P.O. Otto, this juggernaut, Nathan? Uh, I mean, just so evenly matched. It seems like that might be the name of the game out here, finding a high level, but evenly matched as well. So it's on, like Donkey Kong today. Yeah, it's all about the team time trial today. But last week, we were out in New York. Let's take a quick look at how things went in the points race. Last week, out on the Everything Bagel, the men had a lot of climbing on hand. 525 sharp meters total of climbing, 30-plus uh, kilometers to go. But it looks like Vetus was on the attack early on. As you do see there, Ollie Jones trying to make some moves, but it was Thrall taking the points up and over the top uh, from Evoke. But it was Vetus that was on the attack over and over again. Mikey Motram with a little bit of a dig there, as you do see early on. Then we did see the Hadej Siddhar there taking some sprint points midsection through that first sprint section. Then there were some counterattacks as they moved their way on through the King of the Mountain for the second time. Tyler Williams did give it a little bit of a go from Legion before they did do their second time up and over the top of the King of the Mountain. Gavin Dempster, some early moves from Stars to Pearl's Closet, but it did not end up paying off as Thrall again for Evoke. Over the top, they are able to take that down. And through the second sprint point, it was going to be Norn there from SZ, able to take down the points away from Vidar Mail, trying to take those down, coming through for a second. Things calmed down before the final kilometer, and then a late attack coming on through from David Talbot, actually, trying to maybe set up for Saras the Pro's Closet with just a walk away, or perhaps uh, set them up to try and get some of the other teams to chase. Did not end up working out, though, as it was Peterson from P.O. Auto that was able to take that down. Well, and you can see after last week's race, these are the current standings. As we look at the table, it's Canyon Esports up on top. 100 is a perfect score. They're sitting on 95, but still only four points ahead of Saris, the pros closet, sitting in second right now. They're going to be the danger team, no doubt about it today. Uh, P.O. Auto, Ceramic Speed, sitting in third. Evoke Bike, presented by Ensure, in fourth. And you can see how the points stack up here. It gets really close between Bolt Racing Team and Team Swedish Swifters. That's fifth and sixth. Callus Esport Racing in seventh. Venus Pro Cycling, they won the team time trial a couple of weeks ago. It's going to be interesting to see how they do today out of Australia. It's Arrow in ninth and draft in our top 10. We'll go a little bit deeper, but Nathan, the battle's at the top of the table today, isn't it? Yeah, Canyon Esports, they are at the top, but I think Sars the Pro's Closet, they may be able to take over that top spot if they have a stellar day and Canyon Esports do struggle. It's going to be a battle royale, that's for sure. So here's the rest of your top 18 as No Pins R3R sitting in 11th, Dutch Racing in 12th. And you can see it's a baker's dozen there for World Elite Zwifters in 13th, Turbo in 14th, Kiss Racing Team in 15th. Legion of LA, 16th right now. Then you've got Trinity Road Racing, Team AHDR, and Team Skyline. And Skyline will be our first team out on course today. Let's take a look at the route now as... 31K before this one is done and dusted. We're going to have three different checkpoints for you here. The first one will be at the wall, the mall, excuse me, at 7.6K, and then Westminster. That's at 16.8, and then another look at 24K before we've got the finale today. They're going to earn it out there, Nathan, no doubt about it. This course requires focus. There's no long extended climb, but it's certainly far from flat. I think they call it Greatest London Flat just because there's no Box Hill. But this is a complicated course to race on. We're going to find a worthy, worthy winner. Yeah, we got some flat sections that definitely are going to be all about the cohesion of the team and the speed, how what kind of high speed that they can hold all the way through. I think a lot of the teams during their recon are trying to figure out during those flatter sections, what is their aim for their speed? But then, as you did say, there's a climb into, uh, into the square over to the mall. That first climb, it's going to be all about a punch. It's only 30 seconds or so. Then there's a, a couple of other climbs on the Greater London Flat as well. But then when they head on over toward the 
uh, Surrey Hills section, uh, that section, I think, because it's a little bit longer climb, it's going to be about tempering the effort, not all out sprint, but then after that section, they have a dip down into the underground and they leave the underground with that really sharp kick that you can see right around that intermediate three. That one, full gas, nobody holding up. You really got to temper your efforts enough that each one of those sections can be in the orange, all out sprints through those climbs because they are going to be the difference makers if everybody's aiming at that same top end speed and really get their tactics down about how they come through each and every one of the poles. It'll be interesting to see how they play those specific sections out there, Dave. Absolutely. The time taken off of the third rider's front wheel. They'll start with five. If you want to win here, you're going to need to be like P.O. Auto a couple of weeks ago and just have everybody throwing down over 500 watts as they come through in that 45-second pull. And, Nathan, you have riders starting their pull before the rider in front of them has finished. So let's take a look at the teams that are going to make a difference out here. Nathan, I think we've highlighted Saris, the pros closet. They've been the closest, I'd say, to what P.O. Auto has been doing. They need to find another 30 seconds. Do they crack the code? I don't know, but they've been working really hard. These guys are wattage scientists. Yeah, P.O. Auto, I think they're the up and coming. You know, at this point, they're a little ways off being able to get that second or first place, but if Sarsa Pro's Closet, along with Canyon Esports, struggle a little bit, you can jump pretty quickly, but we'd have to see a lot of other teams get in and above uh, Sarsa Pro's Closet and Canyon Esports for it to really make a difference for P.O. Auto, but P.O. Auto, in the last couple of weeks, specifically in the Premier League two weeks ago, we saw them take second place right behind Venus Pro Cycling. Then in the WTRL TTT, they walked away with like a 50 kilometer per hour average in the Thursday's community WTRL TTT. They have been doing their homework. They are showed up ready to study and they're heading up to the chalkboard, I think, to school everybody. We'll see how it ends up playing out though. I wouldn't put it past Vetus to do something special out here. This team is a, a mix of riders basically out of the United Kingdom, and that would include Northern Ireland here with Christopher McGlinchey. He's one of the, and Mikey Motram as well, two of the biggest engines that we have, and they've been working well with that squad. I think they might have cracked the code, Nathan, to have a great ride here today and move up our overall table. It's important to remember that the top team winning here today gets 20 points. So, Nathan, it's a nice look at the men. We've got the women coming. Coming up later, but this one is going to be full gas. The teams are going to be heading out at a faster interval today as well, basically 30 seconds between team start. Yeah, and to set the stage a little bit there about the, the factor that is Vetus Pro Cycling versus Canyon and Saris, they're a factor in that they won the last team time trial, but then also a factor in that they're very low down on the leaderboard with 66 points. If they do take a win or they outdo Canyon Esports and Saris again, that's a couple of points that are stolen from them that P.O. Auto and Evoke then can take advantage of if they're able to get a top spot above Canyon and Sars. So you kind of have the situation where the teams are going to try and get above those top two to steal as many as they possibly can. We are getting right into the race in action. We've got teams out on course, and I believe we're going to take a look right away at Team Skyline as they start out on the London uh, flat or Greater London Flat Course. Just three riders showing up here with Jay McQuarrie, though, as we do see Adam Carr, and it's going to be Parker Heiser, Dave. Justin McQuarrie is a great story, Nathan. This young man is a type 1 diabetic who does not let that slow him down. I love, you know, this is obviously they're up against it here. With only three riders taking the start, there's no doubt that what you're going to witness here is going to be a scrappy, heartfelt effort today. I'll be interested to see if these guys can find their way up. Uh, let, I'd even say if they can get up into the top 12, starting with three, just factoring everything in, that's going to be a sensational ride. So my heart goes out to these guys. That's a tough way to start the race with three. There's various reasons. There's a lot going on as we make our way deep into the Zwift Racing League. Nathan, uh, this is an eight-race series. Half of them are scratch or points races. We'll be back on that format uh, next week. But here we are in the team time trial that we love so much as we're jumping in with Kiss here now. They've got four riders working hard. Nice to see that. What a mix here, eh? Uh, a whole bunch of flags showing you that uh, it, some weeks we'll have over a hundred different nations competing with us in the team time trial. Oh, in their collective, I guess we'd call it a trade team here. But Nathan, the first team's out on course. It's remember, we work in a reverse seed here. So the fastest teams uh, based on points will be starting last here. 
But back to you, Nathan, as you see them working around their, their way around London. London calling today. I heard some writers made a special London playlist to listen to. There's no shortage of songs. Just, I mean, just look at the Clash's library, right? That would be motivating. This section, of course, is very interesting that you're speaking about here, Dave, because this turnaround right here, you can gain a lot of speed. Uh, well, you, you, you slow way down and you can gain time is what I mean, is that when you do this 180 degree turnaround, the avatars actually slow down. And if teams are not aware of this, with how close we've seen these races in the past couple, in the past couple of weeks with the Premier League, as well as the past 80 weeks when it comes to the WTRL, the reality is, is that it comes down to a tenth of a second sometimes between them. This turnaround right here, if they do not get up and out of the saddle and right up to speed immediately, as you do see Holton there on the back. Now Sagerbrook here, we are seeing from Turbo to the same section we're about to see with that turnaround. If they do not get into the orange numbers immediately, they could lose valuable tenths of a second or seconds. Now, Sagerbrook though, getting to look back on, I think he was just trying to go, he was doing the fade, the, uh, the fade off the front and go right to the back and then jump again. And make sure he doesn't interfere with any of the speed at the front there, Dave. One of those tactics we've yeah. heard about from Sarsta Post Closet, actually, in one of their videos. Well, and it's a surgical maneuver. It really is. Uh, you have a very small window because you have to remember, I always think about riding in a breakaway in a regular road race where if you take too hard or long of a pull, you put yourself in jeopardy where that's when you can get attacked. Now, here's the difference. Your teammates aren't going to attack you, but they're going to keep the speed high. And that's really the name of the game. It's not bugging down. That was the moment that Nathan was just talking about. That was a great pro tip right there, Nathan. So, Sagerbrook, they're fighting his way back in. He doesn't want to do that too many times here. As we watch now, this is the sweet science of team time trialing. There's multiple different methods, different ways to do this. Uh, again, just sort of setting the table for you who are joining us. This is our third team time trial. But there have been some riders, Nathan, that have done, I would say, you know, if you think about it, a team like uh, World Elite Swifters. They have done this time trial in the WTRL for at least 40 weeks. They were doing it before I showed up, that's for sure. They continue to be one of the top teams, although they're going to be looking to get a better result. This is a team that comes in hungry, and they're going to try to lick their plate clean today here in London. Giving you an idea of the kind of watts that need to be held on the front end of this team. Kershaw that we just saw, they're pushing out 7.5 watts. Look at for just a moment there. That's going to be the surge pull that you're going to see. They're probably going to do that for about 30 to 40 seconds or so. And then the next team will come on through. The next teammate will come through. You see Lewis Moore now trying to push 6 to 7 watts per kilogram. If you want to get an idea, Premier League speeds and wattages, that's what you're looking for to get top 10s in this kind of a situation here. 7 watts per kilogram on the front, short, sharp pulls. And then the timing is so incredibly important as well. You need to be coming through about 5 to 10 seconds before so that the front end does not slow down. The the top right, the front rider goes to zero or let or you know one two zero watts per kilogram goes directly to the back and that next rider really rolls through as you see Frank Little Meta doing exactly that as he starts to push to the front carries the speed through next rider straight to the back nobody's held up it's all about speed wattages are important but I've seen people use all kinds of big wattages out on course and go nowhere with their speed this looks like a team that's really got it nailed yeah, it's interesting. Those numbers mean a lot. Now, they don't tell the entire story. We were joking about this the other day, your FTP. It's like judging a baseball player or uh, a, a curler or whatever by how far you can throw or hit. There's a lot more to it. And here we go. This is draft that we're looking at. Now, this is a squad that now we're going to another level. Let's start watching the watch down here. So as the guys hit the front, if you want to win today, we're going to have to see numbers that are over 500, in my opinion. And what you're going to see... Maybe a little under that, but Nathan, to tell you the truth, when you look at the monster teams here, and you know we've kind of talked about uh, Pio Auto, Saris, the Pros Closet, uh, and I think we can put Vitas up into that that group here, that elite group today. But uh, you got to put some big, big numbers up on the board. And you know, Nathan, we're gonna go pick up with Arrow next here. Now this team out of Australia has Jay Vine. You were highlighting what a strong rider, what an impact rider he is. When you throw a machine like Vine into the mix, talk to me about that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of wattages he's pulling here. We are seeing 307 on the back as he's resting up at this point. On the front, it's about 6.1 watts. Per I believe that's going to be Harley Moore. Steinus, Campy, Squirrelari, and Ben Hill. But Jay Vine, I think, is the powerhouse. And 
from what I was seeing in the past racing from the last couple of weeks, I don't think he's been showing up. So that is a huge engine to add here. One of the top riders you are seeing, Steinus, now come on through there with that 7.1 watts per kilogram. That's what we're looking to expect there. Now I think he is going to be holding back and off. Look at the hard. question is, will Vine be, a, be enough here to really be able to take this uh, team to the next level and get them into the top 10 results? Because they've struggled to be there as of recently. Now here comes Vine, I think, making his way through a little bit. Eh, 4.2, really doing a good job of sitting in. But uh, 6.8 there from Scolari, 492. Whenever you see it in that 6 to 7, you know that's the rider who's really taking the poles. Harley Moore, back and forth a little bit. I think he's struggling maybe off the back here at this point. Going to be down to three as they're struggling even to hold it together. As it is going to be Vine just trying to hang on. And Squilari's dropping the rest of the team off. Well, and this is it's too early. You can't go with three at this point. Squilari now. So uh, earlier, if you were watching the numbers there, you can see what happened. We're back in with Vetus now. So this is Mikey Mottram that we were talking about at the top of the show. He's one of the big engines on this Vetus team. Christopher McGlinchey is another. Uh, Joe Sutton and Frederick Chesky. So you can see the, the German here. So watch these numbers, Nathan, as they hit the front. So very close for Mikey there as he's sitting at 483. And again, it's this course is more of a, th a threat as far as splitting your team up than people would have thought. That name is really misleading there as you got to stay a little bit tighter formation than what we're looking at now. Now, Nathan, you can afford to make a few little mistakes. Every team is going to today. The thing is, there's not much wiggle room out there. You make a couple big mistakes, blow the team up twice. I don't think you're ever going to have a chance of beating the Saras, the Pros, Closets, or Piawata. You have to have a near perfect ride out here. Let's see how they're taking it out. So we're going to jump back in, Nathan. It looks like Wes and Turbo on our screen. That's World Elite Swifters. Yeah, it does look like Tur uh, Wes are going to be catching Turbo here. Uh, and real quickly, I do want to make a, a point. This section right here is similar to what we just saw with v Vetus there. There are these little bumps. This is a 2 to 3% grading. We just did see the, the riders leave. Take a left-hand turn. Now they're going to go through a little underpass in just a moment. Now Turbo needs to go flying right on, or excuse me, uh, Turbo need to get off the back of here as Wes are overtaking them. Now they're starting to gather up here together a little bit. Wes should have came through very fast now on a downhill section like this though it is a little flatter and even a little downhill so it is difficult but turbo just need to back off so this is a, a tough spot to be in because the amount of speed you can carry easily through here is is, is a very upsetting point because the it it, it just kind of just naturally going to stay high no matter what you do so turbo almost have to go to zero watts per kilogram even to get off of the wheels now as they do go through this underground here for just a moment Real quickly there before, what happened on the mall there is they were leaving that over and over again, heading into the square. That section is a false flat, and I think a lot of the teams did not recognize what they needed to do through there. As Motrin pushed seven watts per kilogram on that false flat, some of the other riders were not prepared for it, it looked like, didn't understand how closely they had to be on the wheels, and then ended up falling off. And that's why things were splitting apart there, I believe. Back in with Callus here, Dave. Good our mail, Norwegian national champion, hammering away. Yeah, it's absolutely that laser-like focus that's going to be required here. You just can't take your eye off the prize for a moment. Now, this is a really strong team that has a lot of depth. And to be fair, the team time trial ex uh, team time trial experience, without any doubt, this is another team that's well balanced here as well. You see all five Norwegian flags. Uh, we really, when you look at this discipline here, uh, you want to find obviously a lot of power but you have to look at the how evenly matched your riders are and this team has really cracked that code so again 31 kilometers of racing uh, they're no longer calling for just for today this is no longer london welcome to downtown pain city as these riders are in the hurt box no doubt about it nathan we are going to try to uh, get you some information but i do hear that po auto is out on course is one of our big favorites today nathan let's take a look at how they're doing right now Looks like Fodager on, Fodager on the front there. Very solid line, as you can see here, of riders taking poles on the front. They're going to do a quick little turnaround here. Doesn't slow down too much through that section. Not quite as, I don't believe it does quite as much as the, the one over on the mall there. But 
as we do see the water just pulling through. Fulgur going to, do you see how he dropped 1.9 watts per kilogram directly to the back and then to it all to the front, 6.3, perfect timing. And did you see, perfectly, oh my gosh, the, the tactic there, the, that was precision from P.O. Auto, and this is what I'm talking about. It isn't just the watts on the front. It's, yes, we do see total coming on through with 6.6 oh, 6 .6 watts per kilogram, 477, but the speed that's carried through without an interruption, one bit, the churn at the front is really what it's about. We saw Tudor come through intensely with high speed as Fulger went directly to the back. A lot of times what can happen in a TTT, if you are gonna get involved on a Thursday or you, get in, or you are in the ZRL, just as a little bit of a heads up there, you really need to pay attention to uh, not letting that speed slow down on the front. So as you do see the straight line though here, Dave, this is one of your favorite tactics here. Not so much of a blob as you like this straight formation a lot of times, I think, for high speed TTT, Dave. Yeah, well, the problem is it's so hard to do this. I think if everybody could, they would, because this is perfection that we're looking at. Some of the other teams compared to P.O. Auto, it's like looking at refrigerator art versus a Picasso to tell you the truth. Look at how tight the formation is and watch the watts. Look at that. You're seeing these over 500 as they hit the front. The guys, if you run running your stopwatch, as a matter of fact, this is a clinic, folks, that we're looking at so, uh, here with P.O. Auto. So we'll have some time checks out here. I'll be shocked if this isn't the fastest time that we have out on course. But again, this looks like another really well put together team. This is going to be no pins that we're looking at. Nathan, very, very similar here. They're flying. When we start looking at the data, it looks like these guys are on a great day today. Yeah, no pins. They did have a breakout ride, actually, uh, the last couple of races. So we will be on the watch out for them. Uh, they are sitting in 11th place so far, though, it looks like, with 51 points uh, in total. So they got a lot of work to do for them, but we'll see what they can pull off. Now, um, real quick mention, you know, P.O. Auto, we have been talking a lot about them as being a very strong TTT team. They've really been starting to shine the last couple of, of races, but they are still sitting in third place overall, and they've got a lot of work to do still out there. Uh, you know, Canyon Esports, as well as Saras the Pros Closet, still on the domination train. So we haven't seen them out on course yet. We have to get an idea of what kind of speeds they're trying to hold, what kind of time checks they're going to be having, because if P.O. Auto, like you're saying, Dave, do have... A, a break a what breakout winning move here with 83 points on the board currently uh they could close the gap by five points and there's still some racing left to go so no, one more ttt and another points race they could get that second or even first place might be within grasp if canyon have a horrible day well, if I was their team, uh, the director sportif, I would just be screaming uh, like Fat Boy Slim right here, right now, guys. This is it. <laughs> if we want to, if we want to win, we have to make a special ride today. So uh, you're going to be digging deeper than you ever have. This is such an awesome format of racing. Again, uh, I mean, it was nearly dead. You only saw it a couple times a year, possibly at a, a stage race in Europe, and now it is back as we are going to be bouncing around. Nathan, you did mention a couple of teams that are obviously going to be in the hunt out here today and here is another one so you really do see the difference as i mentioned we started in reverse order based on seeding so the teams um, that started first have the, are the teams with work to do these are the top teams that we're looking at now an evoke bike presented by insured this is a strong squad and you can see nathan if you can it looks like everybody is trying to use the the highest level of uh, ability this single file style yeah, you know, this is another team that's on the rise. You know, yeah, sitting at that uh, 80 points currently. So they're battling it out with the Bolt Racing team, who also had an amazing race, uh, not this past TTT, but the one before. Uh, so be on the watch out for Bolt Racing team and Evoke to be trying to battle it out here in the times, as well as Team Swedish Swifters. They're only uh, one point off Bolt Racing team. So Evoke, Three points behind P.O. Auto, though, so they've got, you know, a lot of motivation out there to be chasing down P.O. Auto as well. Brian Hodges on the front, usually known as a very strong sprinter, Hodges with a solid kick, but that's going to help a little bit when he does take these pulls for the speed on through. You just see him backing off now and back up in the 6.4 watts per kilogram. It looks like they're trying at least 
Get back on a wheel. Who's taking a pull at this point? A little bit of disorganization, it looks like there. They need somebody in their ears there for a DS to say, no, it's still someone's turn. Way too much of a slowdown. Now, there we go. Morris to the front. It looks like confusion because Thrall's trying to pull through at 6.3. That was time lost with the way that they blobbed up there, Dave. That is a lesson right there on how not to do it. When Hodges backed off, there should have been somebody on the front immediately. Actually, before Hodges was even backing off, starting to pull through at 6+. plus. Now it looks like they're getting it together as Thrall takes a pull and takes over. Maybe, though, there was a little bit of suffering there, Dave, and somebody just couldn't pull through. A lot of times that does happen. Well, and Nathan really highlights how this is not an exercise contest down at the gym. This is a very specialized style of bike racing that we're looking at right now. So Thomas Thrall, the Canadian, is a, a winner outright. It's really interesting in the ZRL, as this league is based on your team's performance, even in the scratch racing or points racing days that we'll be back to next week at the Petit Boucle, the small circle in France. Well, uh, you add the points together that your team has, and then we throw it into the algorithm that creates, it's not even an algorithm, it's just a points table that shows you 20 points is the most that you can win on any day of racing. Eight days make up the ZRL, and we're getting stuck into it now, Nathan. This is our sixth week, and that's Gavin Dempster, a very strong time trialist. This is one of the most recognizable kits in esports. I'm a big fan of Cyrus the Pro's Closet. There you go. They look like they've got it together. This team has put together uh, not only a strong program but they're also uh, one of those teach a, a, a sport to fish they're really showing us how to do this uh, I'll throw it to you Nathan as we look at a team that will certainly be in the top three today in my estimation at the worst Saris the pros closet yeah and these are the ones putting lessons out there now you see coming there he was at the front for just a moment now another push through coming from Ryan Larson there up into 6.47 watts per kilogram that's what you need to see there on the front Big poles sitting in 4 watts per kilogram, 5 watts per kilogram, 4 watts per kilogram. All the other riders just sitting in while Ryan comes through with a monster pull up in that 416 plus watts now at this point. 158, the heart rate's coming right on up as Kumi now backs off and looks to try and get that heart rate back down. It looks like very well organized. These are the ones that, put, that are really putting the education out there about the TTT and know how to make it happen. This is one of the teams that has the most to gain. And the most to lose on the day, though, because they sit in that perfect spot on the leaderboard right now with 91 points, second place. They could take over that top spot if they get four to five points away from Canyon Esports. You know, if they take you know, some, some, some um, points on Canyon Esports, but they've also got something to lose as Pio Auto. They're only eight points behind. And if they have a breakthrough eight. ride and Cyrus don't show up on the day, it's going to be a tough one. But one last thing you, Dave. They have all of their riders today. They've had technical difficulties in the last two TTs. It's not here today. So we may see something new and special from uh, Sars and Polskot today because of that. Rolling like a freight train right now. That is a great shot that we're looking at out here on the greatest London flat course. It's 31K of racing today. And this team's going to get through it very, very quickly. They look like a hot knife going through butter right now. So Dempster's showing us what Nathan had been highlighting here, the technique of coming off the front, getting that wheel. You don't do better than that, Gavin. Uh, chapeau as they say, the tip of the hat there. So, okay, well, the team on the top of the table is Canyon. Now, Nathan, with my math here, that's Lionel Viasan on the front now, this team, if they don't if they don't fall further back than second or third throughout the rest of this series, they're going to win. They're right there, and they generally, they don't finish worse than third. So they are right now in the catbird seat, to tell you the truth. They can dictate who wins the series if they can just, they don't have to win. They just get seconds and thirds from here on in, and there's not enough real estate left for the other teams to gobble up the points. You do the math. That's what's interesting is it keeps it really tight, but then eight points might not sound like much, but when you realize that the winning team gets 20, second gets 19, third gets 18, tell me how you're going to make up eight on a team that doesn't come out of the top three. And here we go, Nathan. You're going to see big numbers. Look at what the Belgian there is doing, Philip Deigner, as he's throwing 502 watts of the German, excuse me, up on the table here. Lionel Viasen showing us the Belgian flag over there on the left-hand side. And then you can see they're going all over the world. South Africa represented New Zealand for Ollie Jones. 
and for Alex West. This Canyon team has set a very high standard. Uh, they participate in all of the levels. They have a women's team. They have development teams. They're in real life monsters. And Nathan, they look like they are in fuego out here today in London. Yeah, absolutely flying here. This is the team to watch out for because another situation here, they have all of their riders showing up on the day. They've got monster engines for those short poles. Seven watts per kilogram from Alex West in the front. Ollie Jones sitting in right behind him at six watts per kilogram. Just to hang on with this team, you got to put out five watts per kilogram to sit in. I mean, this is going to be the ones to watch yeah. out for, I think, today because I think they've really got things nailed today. Uh, I have a feeling that they've been struggling to put together a good race in recent uh, in in the last two TTTs, and I have a feeling that we're going to see something extra special from Canyon Esports this week. Yeah, to be fair, you know, I mean, they haven't been weak in, in any way, shape, or form in the team time trial. I mean, they, they've been right up there. However, they've been really good on the other side of things, and that's been putting four riders in the top 10 in the scratch races every day so this is a really strong team they've got depth they're evenly matched they're gonna be right up there there's no doubt about it is they're just about to the middle part of the course here nathan i don't like this part of the course when you drop down into the tube because you know what's coming that's not fun for guys like me here for you you're probably loving it that you're a wattage cottage but for me, I would be really, really bummed because this grade, it's not severe, but this is where you're really going to find out what you're all about today, whether you've got the legs or not to help the team. I'm talking about with a kit coming out yeah, of they, the subway here. Yeah, and just in just a moment here, they're going to be taking a right-hand turn into a little bit of a punch. Keeping it all together is going to be super important, but then it's the left-hand turn into the actual lower slopes of the Surrey Hills, and that two minute i think it's gonna be a two minute or so climb full gas to the top you gotta make sure you don't drop anybody it is uh, a situation where it's gonna really show how evenly matched the power is between all of the riders because you want to hold the highest power between each other as you possibly can all the way over the top six watts per kilogram i'm guessing maybe a little bit more from each and every one of the riders and then your strongest rider that's still got something left in the tank needs to pull through. You can't just gas everybody and then just sit there on the downhill for a moment. You still need to jump over the top and come on through. So it'll be interesting to see how this ends up playing out amongst them. Toward the front, it does look like taking over. It's going to be Lionel leading them out. You can see the look in the face. Now up and out of the saddle now. Now it looks like Jones making his way to the front. Very strong effort here coming from West now as he makes his way there too. You're yeah, talking about all five cylinders firing here. Look at that. Look at the watts coming from Lionel Viasen right now. So the heart rates are all within a few beats, more or less. Yeah, this is uh, very close to the perfect team that we're looking at with Canyon here, no doubt about it. And you can see, Nathan, everybody is participating. There is no chink in their armor or weak link through this team. Everybody gets up there and does their turn. Boy, yeah, this is a heck of a ride that we're witnessing here. So the intervals, rather than one minute, we're down to 30 seconds now. For uh, it's that, That's worked out very well. Uh, the teams here, though, showing you that uh, I don't think we're going to see big time gaps whatsoever. At this point, they've really, they, we're at the end of that steep learning curve. These teams have done this a few times now at a minimum. And the teams that have got the engines know how to deploy them. As I said, you just got to keep throwing more coal on the fire over over and over and that's what you were talking about nathan coming over the top they're not letting the speed bog down looks like we're jumping in with our swedish swifting friends here does it look like there's a catch being made or they were caught it's one or the other i believe they are being caught here it looks like uh pulling on through at about 5.8 watts per kilogram. we do see the difference though here Softstrom on the front there 363 watts but the difference here between the top teams, 7 watts per kilogram continually, even 8 watts per kilogram we saw for Deitner for a moment there. Coming through this exact same section of the course, the speeds difference are going to be massive. And coming through, is that going to be the BRT team, I believe, Bolt Racing team? They've got to fly through, and I think Norrin and the rest were maybe just slowing down a little bit, perhaps, to allow BRT to come on through as they were being caught. But BRT with only three riders, it'll be interesting to see what kind of team behind they're pulling off. That's a pretty amazing ride from them to be catching SCR while only having three riders, but we did see an amazing ride from them a few weeks back in the TTT. Nikki Hug, one of the strongest riders we've ever seen out on Swift. They they did pick this rider up specifically for the premiere 
I, I believe, uh, or at least in the coming months up to the premiere. So Nikki Hug, very strong rider. Hi, Will Davies. I would be surprised if he was dropped off. Matt Brook is in there still as well. And then Welling. Uh, what's we'll Maybe Davies is off the back, actually. So it's going to be Budge, Welling, and Hug, I believe, wow. that are still together here. As you do see the water just way up there to, amongst them. Yeah, it's always a bit of a dog's breakfast when you make that pass, and the teams do try. The, the real goal here is to have no cross-pollination, and uh, there is an element that goes against human nature where the team being passed, first off, it's that feeling of a little adrenaline kicking in. You're getting caught. That stimulates you. These are athletes. They're proud people, without a doubt. So you have to learn how to just, as Nathan said, go to zero for a moment. Let the gap open so that you're not operating in the draft. And, and these teams have done a great job of it. It's really nice to see. It's the sporting way to do it, Nathan. Sometimes uh, it's not easy, but if you're the team that's getting caught, it's sort of, but also there's a bit on the team making the pass. Don't make the pass and then ease up as you're making it. Slow, drive that nail home. Both teams have a responsibility. I've been really happy to see them doing that out here. Yeah, we do see they're about to hit the underground climb out of this is what the I was talking into about. the elevator <laughs> here. This is it. Yeah, this is the big orange numbers now. Everything they can into the finish here. <laughs> Hug there holding on, as you can see. And this is going to be Ben Hill now as he sits on the wheel. Interesting to see. Arrow, what is going on here today? Arrow hey. with an amazing ride, it looks like, here. And they have made up some huge now, time. Not expecting... So we saw them splitting earlier, though. But you see how they've made up three spots there? It'll be interesting to see. Oh, but that's yes, awesome. I, you're gonna, I, I already know what you're going to say here, Dave. We're missing Sars. We're missing Canyon, some of the top teams. Right, so this is our most up-to-date information. Thanks, Nathan. I just didn't want people to think that Arrow was running away with this one yet. We do have more checks coming in. But, folks, this is what we've got right now. Man, I, the goosebumps are coming up on my arm, sir. I think you call it chicken skin there in Scotland. 21.02, the fastest time right there. But it's so, this is insanity. Nathan, look at this. They're stacking this up by two seconds, another second, another second. We have four teams right now within four seconds on top at that split. More information to come. But, folks, we got ourselves a good old-fashioned barn burner going on out here right now. Greatest London flat, 31K total time taken off of your third rider's wheel. That's going to be critical, Nathan. Do you need to sacrifice a rider today to win? Is that what it's going to take? If it's that close, I think the answer is yes. Now, where did this other rider come from? <laughs> Do you see this? All of a sudden, we've got a fourth here with BRT. Perhaps he was off the front a little ways or maybe off the back for, for a moment or two. Uh, you know, we might have just not caught him coming on through for the underground section. And maybe there was a big catch coming over the top of the underground. You know, there is a reality that that underground, if they backed off just a little bit and somebody threw down some big numbers over the top of there, they could have made up some time. Uh, so we have to wait and see as we are looking at Nikki Hugstill. Good pull through we're seeing from the rider there coming right in by as they are going to be heading back up toward the mall. There's going to be one more section out on course here with a little bit of a climb. It's the right-hand turn into the square. Uh, that is a solid 30 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds or so. Can go full on at 7 to 8, maybe even orange numbers in that 9 watts per kilogram. Last section to really make up some time as we do see Arrow now taking another pull on through his hill. Looks to take the caboose here as somebody pulls through with some high speed. Looks like Ben Hill doing a solid job, though. Well, no time to stop for fish and chips. The Lower Thames Street uh, will be the next check that they would be rolling by. You, you talked, Nathan, about having Vine back being significant for this Australian team. Uh, and and I, I couldn't agree more. It looks like they really put it all together today. What is going on here? These are our friends from the Vetus team. But two riders is not that sub-ideal, to say the least, because we take I mean, the Motram time off of the third. I mean, I think it's Motram and McGlinchey. That's what I'm thinking. They're going to need a, they're so they're strong, need a mate. Well, it yeah, doesn't I do agree. them any good I to ride on with two. <laughs> yeah, no matter how strong you are. Yeah, strong as an ox, but twice as smart is an old joke that you hear in the U.S. Right about, you know, sometimes you really your head has to be driving your decisions out here, not how strong you are. Maybe they've got a rider just up the road. No. Or maybe Bummer. just out of camera there for a moment, Dave. You know, it'd be interesting to see because. We talked a little bit prior to the broadcast, as, as well as in the pre-show there, about how Vetus taking another win 
would be a big upset for Cyrus and Canyon Esports and also set up Pio Auto and Evo to have, you know, a, a ride that yep. could maybe jump up above or at least close the gap. But with Venus so, now not really involved, it looks like, we'll see. Well, and, and Nathan, I think the biggest point to make about the season series is if you're Cyrus the pro's closet and you want to beat the top team Canyon, you can't do it alone. Not only do you need to win and take seconds, but you need other people to beat them, to push them down far enough that they're not getting enough points. So you can't do it by yourself. You need two or three other teams to beat them to be able to make any kind of a quantum leap in points. Getting one point a week, it's not enough. You're going to run out of uh, you're going to run out of road. Yeah, I agree. And the other thing about that is Canyon are looking spot on today. They don't look like they're they missing a mark. They look like it's bullseye. And so they may win today. At worst, I think, like you said, top three. And so there's just a reality that uh, Sars and Pro's Closet are going to have to have a walkaway ride and be consistent. They can maybe gain one point. If they do have an amazing ride, they could still lose one point on the day. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out and look forward to the points race. Because I have a feeling Canyon, they are a freight train today. It's going to be hard to deal with. Now Ben Hill pulling on through. They're making a catch, actually. Arrow are having a solid ride because they're catching race 3R. I know we don't have a splits right at this moment here, but this is telling us that Arrow are having a better ride than I was that expecting from them. And they've really brought things back together after that mishap, leaving them all on that 1% uh, uphill gradient earlier where they kind of split things apart. Now it looks like they're really on a roll. Nathan, in our, what have we done? Uh, 35 WTRL broadcasts together. I have never seen a cleaner pass than what we just witnessed right there. That was that was surgical. Um, is that because we're looking at the highest level pros out here that we see that? Because certainly if we were looking at the Mocha division, um, it, uh, it turns into a, a bar fight sometimes when these passes happen. That was really pro. Well, also looking at the reality of the kind of watts that Jay Vine was pulling off there. I mean, this is the guy who's dominated yeah. a lot of the Australian Zwift. So, so a lot of people who are watching at this time of day might be like, Jay, who, what? And if you watch a lot of ZCL at, at those early morning broadcasts that we have, a lot of stuff we're doing with Zwift Australia, Jay Vine has absolutely dominated the Australian championships, the Australian leagues when it comes to anything Zwift racing, as well as Bree Vine as well, also riding for Aero. They actually cycle uh, indoors on Zwift right next to each other. It's an amazing household. We call it the Vine Show a lot of times. Uh, over on our Australian production. So really cool to see Vine getting involved here. And that pass had a lot to do with, I think, 7.5 watts per kilogram on the front coming from Vine. Well, that uh, Arrow women's team has three riders with the first name Bree, right? So all they need to do is finish every Bree on the team and they'll they'll get a time. It's uh, I love what's happening in Australia, You're right? We don't, because of the time differences, we don't see the, the racing from that zone as much but it's always fantastic there's no doubt and actually Zwift seems to be thriving down there let's jump in with Turbo here Tanner Ward we watched them earlier this is a team I like a lot this is a team that has a big upside a lot of potential here they've got smart young riders that uh, again room to grow for Tanner Ward Spencer Sagenbrook and company is I think we're seeing some finishing times coming in Nathan or yeah that's, that's not going to the line I believe yeah. All right. We'll start gathering that data for you here. Yeah. As we Wilson here, we're trying to hold on. This is a tough spot here, Dave. You know, we see this a lot in the TTT on Thursdays, right, Dave? Where it's those final moments. You need yeah. the last rider so badly. He's struggling just to hang on. The heart rates are so incredibly high. 187. Look at Wilson. He, look at the heart rate from Wilson right now. Unreal. Just doing everything he can. He gets back on terms, but... That slowed everybody down from it there because he was unable to sprint like Sagerbrook throwing down 8.5 watts per kilogram. Those were seconds lost, not gained there in the final UK. They just hit that point where you say, release the hounds. As we're, and within what, at what point, Nathan, do you just say, everybody, you do your thing. You be your bad self and get across that line. We're no longer going to try to fight to get back in the draft. I mean, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, when you see triathletes or cyclists that work so hard to hold that arrow position, man, it requires so much. Speaking of arrow, here we are jumping back in with the Australians. They're going to bring four to the line here. This should be a very good time. As a matter of fact, I'm expecting a new fast time here for this squad. Good for them. 
Yeah, this is, and we we talked about this prior to the broadcast a little bit. Will the addition of JVI make a difference? I think it has. I think having that strong engine to kind of build the team around. I also think that Squillari had a solid ride as well as Hill out there today. Now we are seeing three R, our three arc no pins come on through. They were caught by Arrow though and passed. So Arrow having a solid day against one of the top teams in the league here, showing Not that they, you know, with no pins are eleventh currently, Dave. So, you know, Arrow there, able to grab a few more points over the top. So, very good ride there coming from Arrow. Very impressed he out here today. Uh, able to show what they're worth. Callus, that our male on the front. He's their champion. We'll see what they can pull off. They're going to just let that rider go. All in at this point, right, Dave? Do not hang on any longer. Absolutely, Nathan. And, and you know what? It's actually a good sign. It's taking a hard pull and saying goodbye to the team is a class act. You give them another kilometer per hour of speed to just a little more momentum because your time isn't going to matter. The fourth rider here, we could do it one more time if you can. And I can understand if you can't because there's going to be lactic acid pooling up in these riders' legs like the Baltic Sea here as these guys have really been through a lot. So, all right, we're going to be finishing teams rapidly. We do get a look now, Nathan, get a peek at some of the fastest times that's going to be based on, well, you called it. Good job in our pre-show this morning, Nathan. You said watch out for Arrow. Now, I don't know if that's going to be enough to win, but that's a solid ride. It's only five seconds back to draft, so they had a heck of a ride today as well, because look at that jump, Nathan, to Dutch Racing. That's going to be all a minute from second, but Arrow, well, in the finish house right now, they should be feeling mighty chuffed. That's a heck of a ride today. Well, 38.57. I have a I have a feeling, though, Dave, that uh, we're going to see these blown out of the water by Saris and Canyon, though. I mean, the great ride by hey. Arrow. They're the best of the rest here at this point. But my feeling, though, with the way that I saw Saris and Canyon come on through, I have a feeling we're seeing five fives uh, from them as well as a little bit more coordination. Now this is going to be BRT coming on through. P.O. Auto, here we go. The, now this is what I'm saying. P.O. Auto, look at the speed coming on in. Look at this. This is uphill, too. This is a 1% uphill gradient. This <laughs> looks like they're pushing in almost 50 kilometers per hour. P.O. Auto are looking to try and take this down. They're sitting in third place overall right now. This is the top three situation we're talking about, Dave. This, Nathan, this is not a wattage cottage. This is a wattage condo in Malibu, California. This is the highest end of watts that we're looking at. I don't know. I, I'm a canyon if they want this one. They're going to have to dig deeper than they have so at any point. And they are the top team coming into this race. So let's see how they stack up. We're going to go in with Saris, the pros closet now. Nathan, they started seconds? at 30, 30 second seconds, intervals. Dave. Yeah, it might be less. I don't know, Nathan. It's going to be incredibly close. By the time this one is done and dusted, we're going to find a worthy, worthy winner for you here in London. Wow. Oh, man. I am looking. I'm uh, Turbo. Uh, actually, uh, so Matt close. Turbo is actually live streaming right now, and he came through at a, at about a 38 or so. Here comes Canyon Esports. Well, Canyon. Esports uh, with Alex Wester just letting him go. Looks like Alex it, took a suicide though. Canyon was right there. There's no way, right? Canyon was right no, there. I'm with you. So this is thumbnail sketching it for you as we are working on the data. Hang in there, folks. Don't worry. I think they hit it's a 37 coming. something. But, I think they hit a 37 yeah, Nathan, something. That's what I'm guessing there. It, and, and I'm just using like almost like a sundial here, but saying that <laughs> Canyon was closer than 30 seconds to Saris, who looked to me to be very close to 30 seconds behind. Wow, that's the best racing. That's what it, So anybody who tells you that team time trialing is not exciting should go see their doctor, get their eyes or their heart checked because something's going on with them. That was unbelievable racing. And Nathan, as you said at the top of the show, execution, skill, tactics gameplay and a big engine it's not any one of those things it's all of those things you know to, on the competition side it's great to see how things are playing out and everything but there's also this camaraderie side too i want to speak a little bit to the community as well alex west that was a suicide on the front awesome. and then just everything he's got to get to put them into that final uh, 500 meters or so then you see him off the back. He's given everything for his team. We saw that over and over again from a lot of the teams. I love to see that. I love to see how much everybody's putting on the line for each other. It's one of the best experiences, actually, that you can have on his whip. I'm racing the TTTs on Thursday. As we see Mikey Motram, though, putting a dig on the front here. This was one of the riders that um, is a huge asset as well as a bomb, I think, to the team sometimes because of how much power he throws down. 
Yeah, it's funny. Like so many things in life, right? Your greatest strength can be your greatest weakness, too. It's such a fine line out here. As we take a look at some of the action that happened over the course of the last 45 minutes or so, it was an absolute Donnybrook. I'm not sure where Bedlam is, but we might have been there today. So I am hearing through comms that they are confirming Canyon for the win. Canyon will take top points. And Nathan, it's going to be really hard to take them out of the lead from here on in is this was a command performance from the Canyon esports team. And there we go. Taking a look, look how close that was with a 38 Oh seven for the winning time. 21 seconds back for Saris, the pros closet. They're getting close. PO auto in third today, just four seconds back there. So 20 points, 19 points, 18 points is what we're looking at. Bolt racing team in fourth arrow has a great ride today to find the top five. It's actually tied there. It's down to, tenths of a second when you see bolt racing and arrow at fourth and fifth draft at just 55 seconds so six teams within a minute on the greatest london course 117 back for callous esports racing team swedish swifters of the norwegians the swedes there seventh and eighth evoke bike in at ninth and dutch racing is in tenth there 155 back nathan back to you that was one heck of a team time trial today we're really finding our stride with this event Looks like Sars the Pros Closet with all of that education going to the drawing board, having to put out 0.2 watts per kilogram less and still taking that uh, second place. Pretty amazing there. Uh, P.O. Auto holding on. You know what's interesting? When it comes to the strength of the teams and their tactics, one, two, three, that's the league standing. It really goes to show, you know, how who knows how to race the game, who's done their homework, as well as where the strengths lie as well. One thing I do want to point out as well, though, is how Bolt Racing Team they, they have um, been showing that their TT is a strength. You know, their TT, their team time trial is definitely somewhere where they shine. I think they've done a lot of homework as well. Uh, they may not be the strongest team when it comes to a points race or a scratch race, getting to line first, but they have really hammered that down, it seems like. They've been showing up with some solid results, actually, in the TTT. Very impressed by that. But Canon Esports, we saw it. You saw the speed. You can you can just see it in in you know, the avatars and the way that they were going along with the pixels there, it was just obvious as well as how they were pulling through. It was just not slowing down 20 seconds. That is a huge gap amongst this field. Yeah. Well, so you got a good preview of what the greatest London flat is all about. We're going to lock and load one more time as the women are coming up next same course expect the same exciting racing as we're ready for another major throwdown so one thing we know for sure and we'll have a chance to analyze more data later but no doubt about it canyon esports remains the kings of the zrl they're going to add the maximum points 20 to their tally giving them 115 let's see if they're going to be able to chip away at that we've got three races left again the men will be back racing again next monday but let's go to the women's race now nathan time for another throwdown in london yeah, a quick little look here at what went down on the Everything Bagel in New York with the women's race last week. Again, we are out for two climbs, 34.2 kilometers, 525 meters last week that they saw over the top of the first queen of the mountain. Lou Bates, that all-star on no pins 3R, trying to take it down, unable to, though, just nipped at the line by Hino with Caroline Williams. And Williams, as well as... Uh, Kolchinski, watch out for those two names in this race because they were really the standout riders on the aggression as well as watch out for that uh, sneaky little win at the end here. But Polly Mason we're taking a look at here and then uh, trying to hang in and amongst Jackie Godby able to take it down for Vision there when it came to the points. It looked like Illy Gardner, another name to be watching out for always. But it was Kolchinski and Reznikov from 2020 that went for the one-two punch over the second queen of the mountain. Unable to hang on, though, as Williams continues her walk-away performances, showing why the Zwift training that I've seen from her week in and week out is starting to really pay off. This is a woman that has really made her name specifically through Zwift racing as she had that walk-away performance at last second dive to the line. Well, excuse me, last second uh, breakaway and ended up walking away with it. High note, domination, Dave. Yeah, let's take a look at the table because it's a perfect score 
right now. Domination is right, Nathan. Hino Racing Team with 100 points. 2020, though, they're fighters sitting in second right now, and that's going to be the battle. They're second, third, and fourth. So 2020, then Arrow, the Australian team, no pins, R3R. They're still in the hunt, and that's where I would draw that line for teams that are going to end up with a chance to be on our overall podium after eight weeks of racing. Cryo RDT sitting in fifth. They're actually tied on points right now with Evoke. So Evoke, Cryo, fifth and fifth. We'll go to seventh for KISS Racing Team. Team Sweetest Swifters in eighth. Saris the Pros Closet in ninth. And I race like a girl sitting in our top 10. I'm just going to go a little deeper, Nathan, all the way through Canyon Esports in 11th, TFC 12th, Vision Racing sitting in 13th, Team Fearless in 14th, Turbo in 15th, and then the Velox Velocity Vixen sitting in 16th right now. But you can see that there's going to be a real battle right there as well because it's important. You don't want to be at the bottom of the table either or you get replaced by the teams being promoted into the Premier League. Yeah, and Hino, uh, obviously, just a walk away ri uh, ride from them in the overall series. Uh, 2020, they've been trying to, you know, do something to, to nip at the heels, but I think it's unsurmountable without Hino almost not showing up any longer. I mean, they've completely stacked their team. The other thing is that with Hino, you know, I know it's Hino, 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 but the reality is, is that not only did they walk in with the juggernauts that were Vicky Nilan, Vicky Whitelaw, you know, Hanson, etc. Then they go ahead and they throw in Caroline Williams. I mean, then, you know, on top of that now, and then, the, you know, it's, it's just like they've, they're the super team that's out there. So at this point, it is going to be a battle mainly for second. We'll see if 2020 can hold on to their spot there in second because Arrow and No Pins as well are looking to try and get into that second place. Yes, yeah, we dig a little deeper with the teams, my squad to watch here today, Nathan, is Evoke Fike. I really like this team. I think that they're cracking the code in front of our eyes. Angela Pitzer, Jamie Clark, Jana Riktrova. She's the Czech athlete that's in Texas now. Molly Keller and V. Wynn, who work together at Microsoft over in, uh, in Seattle, Washington. Those two are part of a movement coming out of the Pacific Northwest. No surprise, to tell you the truth. Around the globe, we find our hot spots of Zwifters, and there's definitely one there. But, Nathan, I think Heino, in my opinion, is the perfect team time trial team. Uh, they have so much power. It's so well distributed amongst all of the riders. And you know, another important thing that they have had for a long time, let's talk about the difference that morale and a history with each other makes, because these are some of the most experienced esports riders in the game today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want to go back to the conversation a little bit about 2020 and what they need to do, because I think some of these other teams are starting to what you would say, crack the code a little bit here, Dave. And I think the 2020 have been riding this wave of chasing high note, keeping things you know uh, together when it comes to the new education, bringing some really strong in real life riders. But I think there's a couple other teams that are really like, hmm, I can smell some victory maybe on the way. Arrow, definitely one to watch out for. 86 points currently on the board. They're only five points behind. 2020 struggle a little bit. Arrow put something good together. No pins, 3R as well. Evoke, as you said. these are Now, Evoke's not really a threat, though, when it comes to the overall leaderboard. They struggled a little bit too much early on, but they are uh, trying to hold on to that fifth place overall with Priority T tied up with them currently at this moment. But again, 2020, I think, they are watching out for Arrow and no pins, 3R to maybe try and make a move for that second place. So we're going to jump right on in to the racing we're out on london again it was 31k and it's fast and fierce it's over quickly dave it's a lot of power in a short period of time yeah i don't know that there's a more painful discipline uh, or more fear inducing discipline than what we see here 31 kilometers the course is called greatest london flat it's anything but that so we we uh when you look at it we've talked about focus out here today even distribution of power uh, nathan has done a really good job of explaining the different techniques that teams are using but i think if we go back to what the men just showed us let them be an example going back to i guess you know how there's different you would know well in wisconsin nathan uh, there's classic and then skate skiing with cross country right uh, different ways to do kind of the same thing. I think you want to go classic today on this course. <laughs> going classic. They are. I like, I like <laughs> it. Like it, Dave. They're, they're definitely going classic, it looks like here, as we do have Hannah Bear now making her way to the front, taking over. 
Now we can get some ideas here on the women's side of things. The wattages that are going to be held. Counter Bear there, 5 watts per kilogram, a little bit plus here. They're currently sitting in the second to last, so they've got a little bit of a battle ahead of them. But Turbo and them are tied for 14th place currently at 35 points. Vision E Racing just a little ways ahead of them, uh, about 8 points ahead at 43 points. So that may be on the radar. Now, the cool thing about some of these teams that... Uh, are at the lower end of the bracket. They've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. If they have a breakaway ride, Dave, where they get a solid 15 to 20 points, that will jump them way up in the standings, actually. And, you know, it's, instead of 14, suddenly they're in the top 10. So be on the watch out for some of these teams that maybe have been doing their homework, putting some work in, getting some uh, uh, peak fitness perhaps as well, maybe make some jumps this week. Boy, Nathan, there's a term schadenfreude, right, where uh, you wish bad luck on others, I guess is sort of what that means. But, I mean, you almost are going to need that for a couple of teams out here because anything can happen uh, in a team time trial. Uh, and uh, it's sometimes it's not about having good luck yourself. It's about others having some bad luck in bike racing. This is a wild sport. And everything that applies to in real life racing, as far as the wildest of things happening out there, they can happen here too. That's a, some points being made uh, in previous broadcasts about finishing, always finishing, just because you don't know. Uh, I, you know, I've been in races. It, luckily, it doesn't happen in Zwift where the front group has taken a wrong turn. You know, it happens. I guess that doesn't happen on Zwift. Thank goodness. We're going in with another team here now as we're kind of moving through again. The team starting in their reverse seed order. So our fastest teams will be out on course last. But, Nathan, this looks like a team that's firing on all cylinders here. Yeah, Team TFC, very strong team. One of the longest standing teams in Zwift, actually. The Friday criteria. Good to see them out on course hammering away right now. Uh, currently, they're um, they're uh, sitting. It looks like somewhere within almost that top ten situation. We have Seal now making her way to the front. There, Clampy now sitting just on the wheel. It looks like there was a little bit of a gap getting shut down. I believe Clampy shut that down rather than Seal slowing down. That's the way you want it to be done. That second rider always kind of being the glue that keeps things together. Twenty-eight point three kilometers to go as they are two point eight in. And here we go, Becky Seal, six point five. Watch for kilogram that taking a solid pull as Clampy holds it all together. Dropping riders though, early to be doing that and uh, solid effort here. Seal's now now Seal because she did that. It's her responsibility if she's that strong of a rider is to take those two riders behind and bring them back up. And it looks like it's within that five meter. She's gonna do just that. Clampy doesn't have to slow down too much. And they're gonna keep the speed. They may have to let Armstrong go. We'll have to wait and see. As it does look like Hannah Peel just jumps back on Armstrong. Needs to have a solid kick. Right hand turn into a climb. Going to be a tough uh, section here for Armstrong if she is really struggling that much. As we say, the train can't leave the station until all the bags are on board. And they got them on board there. Nice job. Nice recovery by TFC here. We're going to jump next as we move through our early starters. This is Canyon here, the familiar kit. Uh, Nathan, again, I, I love the participation that Canyon has in esports as we look at Hilden and Falk, Wilkinson and Baring, Wilkinson and Baring out on course right now. See what kind of result they can put together here yep. today. Course that suits this squad well. Mary Wilkinson, scary Mary, as they like to say, always going to be one to watch out, especially on the hill climbs. Participates in a lot of hill climb kit championships actually over in the UK. Claudia Berry now coming on through, as you do see. Former U.S. National Champion of Zwift. Hildonan's there as well. Very well-supported team. You see them all in their canyon kits there. 5.8 watts per kilogram currently coming from Claudia Berry. I believe she's riding at a little bit of elevation, if I'm not incorrect, out in your state there, Dave. So Claudia here about to take a little bit of a, of a, of a pinch here on this 3 to 5%, even up in the 6, I believe, is percent gradient here in just a moment. This is going to be a section, I believe she is going to be holding about 6.97 watts per kilogram on the front now at this point from bearing as Wilkinson, interesting enough, on the back after taking the initial pull. That's your climber on the back, but the timing there with the pulling maybe just didn't set up correctly. All right, well, here's a team as we look at Canyon and jumping now to Saris the Pro's Closet. Hey, 
That's Kai Takashida there. You know, Nathan, I am predicting that uh, Kai wins a major gravel race here in the United States. She's a she is one of the most under recognized, undervalued racers we have. A huge engine, and uh, she's quietly been uh, honing her skills. This team, there's Christy Tracy. We know her well from our Zwift community live racing, the WTRL, actually across the board. Christy, one of the most active esports racers in the sport, and. As I say, this technique right here, keeping it fast but smooth, that's the big challenge. Sarah's the pros cause it, another team yep. that uh, represents very well. Back to you, Nathan. 20 seconds or so, I believe, is the gap uh, between Sarah's the pros closet and Canyon Esports, who's just ahead of them here. And uh, it is going back out just a little bit. Interesting enough to see. We'll see what, what they're going to be able to hold on to as Tracy here pulls them right on through. So a uh, solid ride here coming from Sarah Supro's closet. It does look like uh, we're going to jump on in with iRace like a girl here. It'll be interesting to see what they can pull off. They've got a lot of very strong triathletes on this. Johanan, it looks like, Jewett, as well as Wendorf all hammering away. And uh, where are they pulling at? It looks like 4.7 here coming from Jewett, who's trying to make her way to the front. I believe it's going to be Kessler who is on the front, though. Yeah, that uh, Meredith Kessler is the rider there. They just got done uh, competing in the Florida Ironman Triathlon. Carly Johan, a another super strong rider on this squad. As a matter of fact, yeah, uh, Lenny Ramsey, uh, you see the Dutch flag living in the United States right now. So uh, this is a really good example of how the teams work nathan is there's no reason that you need to be geographically uh near each other sometimes you see that but uh more often than not you find the right riders i mean nathan i think you found this yourself in as you got into uh the wtrl and team time trialing it's really hard to find guys that can make five and a half watts per kilo it doesn't matter where they live trying to find them in your zip code well odds are pretty good you're the only dude that lives in your postal code that has that kind of ability so you need to uh, branch out a little bit to find a team and that's why we see so many international teams and then you see like these uh, umbrella squads like cryo right that have uh, over 400 riders participating under the cryo banner i love that cryo is just one example isn't it yeah, Cryo RDT, that's who we're looking at right now. We do see Klein, Stevenson, Mora, Perryman, and Yukena out of Germany there. They're trying to hold on to a little bit of a gap over Evoke. I do believe they went out first prior to Evoke. Evoke are chasing them down. So they're always going to have behind them, uh, on, on their screen, they're going to see the gap between them and Evoke. And they are tied currently or fifth place with Evo at 70 points. So that is a battle that's going to be playing out on course between these women live for their, for them. That's going to be a lot of motivation to have a good ride today as well because they can see their their direct competition chasing them down. So Klein, now we do see 5.1 watts per one at the front. Looks like a solid pull through here. Now, uh, it, watching that though, the downhills are interesting sections because you have so much speed coming through. Now, what do you do? Do you carry the speed through or do you take the full rest so that your engine can reset, right? Like some of those riders were like, it's not my turn. So, I need a full reset. Or do you just pull right on through and take that speed. My opinion is sacrifice it, pull through, take the speed. Others take it differently. No, take the rest. So, uh, you know, Nathan, you make the perfect point there. I think that the strongest riders need to push harder at that point. The riders who are having str trouble holding the wheel, don't do more. That's really the name of the game. Keep yourself in the draft. Don't make it harder for the guys that are taking the long pulls. And here we go. We're starting to see some splits coming in. Again, uh, we've been trying to get checks from the mall out here. Uh, there's some classic, iconic London landmarks that we race by to the mall through Westminster and uh, the Lower Thames Street. Uh, so those are the checks that we have. And here we go. Well, it looks like Vision e-racing at 11, 10 more times coming through. Pretty close here. Team Fearless at 12 seconds back, 34 seconds back to Turbo. Those are the first three teams. We'll continue to fill in the data there. That looks good. Yeah, Illy Gardner here on the front end of this group. And she is going. She is the standout rider there from the KISS racing team. We're going to see uh, how Illy can pull this off now. 
because the reality is she is the standout and so she is going to find herself on the front a whole lot uh really i think for this team it's giving illy the amount of rest that she needs to just come back through and pull again give her the rest exactly. come back through and pull again the other riders there hold as high as they can for if they need to shorten their pulls even she do so she may just need 15 20 seconds 30 seconds get let two riders and then she could take an extra pull because she is that strong of a rider nathan that that point is perfect because i think that uh, when you look at hino the riders i talked about power distribution all five riders will work very close to 20 percent of the time on the front you look at a team like 2020 where maybe that's a little more of a challenge they've got reznikov and kolchinski who are making some really big numbers and then it's the crux of the climb it's the crux always it's that third rider it's so, that's the pivot point on everything out here now you don't want to be down to three until i mean if you're down to three before 2k to go that's too early so ideally you've got more than that but that's a worst case scenario and again every team starts with five or hopefully is able to start with five you never know if a team's gonna have to scratch a rider but at the end of the day it's the third rider's front wheel where we take the time and we're getting more splits in now so i race like a girl fastest now with a 1045 you look at saris the pros closet in with a 1320 or excuse me i'm sorry that's 13 seconds back so 10.45, the fastest time at that split, 13 back to Saris, Vision at 24, 31 seconds back to TFC Canyon right now. But there's going to be more fast times coming through like this one, 33 seconds back, though, for Canyon. And Team Swedish now, new second place time at that split. But again, that split one tells us a lot, but it only really is the first chapter of a long book. I raced like a girl, solid time so far. 10.45 at 7.5 kilometers in, but there's a lot of racing to go. That just shows how fast they went out. Ooh, Kiss Racing Team coming on through. Illy Gardner, look at that there. Team Swedish, Saris, really close still. This is not over one yep. bit between these top four teams at this point. You know, it's very, very close. And we still have the teams of Hino, 2020, et cetera, still to come through. Yeah, the, the woman who holds the Strava record for the fastest climb to the top of Mount Evans, even though she lives at sea level in Seattle, V. Win, out of Vietnam, took a trip to Colorado, showed up, uh, basically wheeled her bike from the airport over to the bottom of the mountain and again set the fastest time on Mount Evans. She's unbelievable when it comes to climbing and she took a solid pull here for the Evoke team. That's Monalee Keller right in front of her and it looks like we're jumping in. We're still waiting for split time from them but Nathan I think we've got our 3R right in front of us now. Yeah it looks like it is going to be our 3R uh, and where is Lou Bates here. That's going to be the question. On the front, that's where I'd expect her to be. As it's yeah, going to be. Good call. Uh, again, this is another situation, like I said, with uh, with uh, Illy Gardner. Is that, you know, she's going to be taking some strong pulls over and over and, uh, again. And just let her get the rest that she can get. Same with Lou Bate. Let her get the rest she can get and set her right back to the front. Really use that engine as much as you can. Now, I'm having to see. This is going to be the Vine show we were talking about there. Bree Playo is also there. Bree Vine. Jacob there. Pet Pettington is there. Wilson, so interesting to see how Arrow is going to be able to pull this off because I have a feeling they're out here for a solid ride because they were third overall, right, Dave? They were, they've got a lot to gain right. here, but 2020, there they are chasing them down. Look how close that is at checkpoint one there on the mall. It's only less than two seconds. Oh, here we go as I see Arrow Women's now coming in with a new fastest time. This is updated just as you would think it would as the top teams are making their way through. You can see that that's going to be Reznikov and company 2024, I should add, as they just made that adjustment. I saw Arrow Women's fastest time there, 10.36, seven seconds, basically back to no pins, R3R. I raced like a girl slotted in third. Again, this is at checkpoint one. Next one coming up at Westminster, just about 17K. But Nathan, let's well, that was 2024 that we were looking at. This is Hino. There we go. So this team, now what a great story. Hino has already gone by 2024, Nathan. That oh me okay. I'm being told that there was there, there that uh I believe there was something that went down with the start times with 2020. So we'll have to wait and see how this ends up playing out here. 
uh, as uh, I am seeing something. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure that that's actually how it went down. Uh, they started, I'm hearing, behind Hino. So we'll have to wait and see how this ends up playing out when it comes down to the actual times. Hino, though, 1027. And they're within striking distance, I think, here still. I think it's still actually pretty matched for the efforts between these two teams at this point. If I'm getting the correct information coming on through here, 2020, they still have a chance up against Hino because I think they're chasing Hino right now, trying to keep that gap. We're in with Hino right now as we look at a squad that has been perfect up to this point in the ZRL. And, I mean, we have community racing that goes on on Tuesdays with uh, thousands and thousands of riders, actually thousands of teams, I should say. And we don't see that scenario, but a couple of times being replicated, and that is a team that has won every time that they have lined up in the ZRL. Again, we now have completed three scratch races. This is our third team time trial, and we're going to see if they can hold on and continue to roll like the champs that they are. So that's Vicki Nealon on the front, Alice Lethbridge right behind her, another one of the Vickies, Vicki Whitelaw there. As this team just is phenomenal. Hey, Nathan, I mean, I guess you can really, when you look at a few of these teams, they have their strengths. This team doesn't have a weakness. No, and they really don't. Lethbridge here, Nealon Williams. I mean, you put these names together. Uh, this is Hanson is there as well. Obviously, just unstoppable. Vic, they even threw Vicky Whitelaw in the mix of it all here. So, uh, watch out for just and essentially, in my opinion, what we're watching here is what kind of. T Early on, and they might be really just kind of blowing a gasket to hang on. Let's talk about Carly Williams for a moment, Nathan. Is she the breakthrough rider of the season for you? Carolyn Williams, yes. Well, her and Kolchinski. One of. Kind of a, it's kind of a, yeah, it's her and Kolchinski. You know, that's kind of the two, I would say, that have made this breakthrough into racing, specifically through Zwift. Uh, you know, and uh, Williams, both of them, I've, I've, been, I've been watching their training on Zwift, and they really have been putting in the work, putting in the effort. Uh, one thing that I've seen a lot from Caroline Williams that I think uh, has um, started to bring some peak fitness on, take her to almost another level in and amongst the same level or even better than some of her teammates, actually. She gets picked up, and next thing you know, she's winning scratch races up against some of the best races in the whole of Zwift. She's throwing down 100 milers midweek last week, right? She's she's putting in weightlifting sessions. I'm watching her training, and I'm like, that looks like World Cup. I mean, you know, I follow a lot of mountain bikers. I follow a lot of uh, top-end level mountain bike talent in the world and what their training sessions are and some of the stuff i see williams out there doing, i'm like that looks like uh kate and nino like a little bit here when it comes to the world mountain bike you know what i mean Nino know you know it's like holy cow this is a serious athlete and it's pretty cool to see that level of dedication at this top end of the premier league in swift racing it just goes to show uh how real deal this racing is and a beautiful thing, Nathan, if she looks around and sees four potatoes, it doesn't do her any good. She can look around and say, I don't even know if I'm the strongest rider on my own team. That is a beautiful thing when you're as strong as Caroline is, right? That's the name of the game in the team time trial. It's not just about how strong you are. It's about how strong your teammates are. And we can talk about third rider all day long, but it's deeper than third, to tell you the truth. It really, I mean, uh, you can't really afford to have any weak link. I guess you could get away. I mean, this team, again, when you look at it, it's a beautiful situation. Uh, C Cecilia Hansen, the Swedish rider here, is just a massive powerhouse now. Just look at, you know, look how low her heart rate is for the work that she's doing and how quickly she recovers. She's going to be representing Sweden at the World Championships, and I'm really excited to see how she can do on uh, what's going to be a course that suits her coming up in less than a month. Uh, I think December 9th the esports world championships coming out it's amazing how we're moving right through this season here we are race six of the zrl our third team time trial it's a throwdown here 31 kilometers of racing here on the course that we know well i'm sure nathan has raced here hundreds of times the greatest london flat but never quite like this team time trialing at this level is its own unique animal this hurts a lot and this is the team that's pouring it on right now Oh, boy. I tell you what, the gold standard, Nathan, it's going to be really, really hard to go over the top of this ride today. 
Yeah, looking through here, Nila now uh, holding on, as you can see, 4.2 watts per kilogram. So really the pull through is gonna be Williams. Look at that, 6.1 currently coming from Williams. Looking very under control too as well. In the lower right hand side, you do see that is gonna be Caroline Williams, the athlete we've been talking about. 273, she pulls through. Now it's gonna be Al Stuthbridge, her turn now. Speed coming right on through, 5.7. Did you see the seven watts per kilogram there? Perfectly executed to the front. Nila They have this down. The, 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 what, the glue is going to be that second rider, making sure all the rest of the pack holds that speed as Lethbridge takes a monster pull at the front. Williams making her way back slowly to the back. Very interesting to see the differences here between some of these teams and what, how you can really dominate in this. Now look at Hanson now. Look at how quick that pull was. Seven watts per kilogram quick. Now Hanson right to the front. 30 seconds max. Hanson, speed at the front, no slowing down. Lethbridge slowing to the back. Nealon, gluing it back together. Perfection, in my opinion, when it comes to a TTT. You have to remember, too, Nathan, when you look at those wattage numbers, that these women are weighing, you know, two-thirds to four-fifths as much as the men, right? So th those numbers, it's all about the ratio of watts per kilo. And this team is just when you look at the formation here uh, I guess it's it's well put to say that you have a unique situation in elite athletics where there's people with talent there's people with work ethic uh, to find five people that have both at the very highest level is absolutely amazing you never know how long something like that is going to last but let's take a look now at another team working with four riders. I think we're up, we're back in with 2024 now. That's going to be Kristen Kolchinski, who was Nathan was talking about. Absolutely one of the breakthrough riders this year. She's racing out of New York, uh, Long Island, Hampton. And to be exact, there's Reznikov, her Israeli teammate here. Uh, they've been the powerhouse on the squad. The Olympics bronze medal winner, Jasmine During, the Canadian in the team pursuit. Charlotte Backus out of Utah. And Shayna Paulus, her brother, Nielsen, who made big star at this year's Tour de France. Shayna, her, her uh, partner, playing for the Dallas Cowboys. And her brother just got married this week. So Shayna is just absolutely crushing life, no doubt about it. There she is taking a big turn here as we look at there's Shayna's lovely mom as well you gotta love what's going on with the Paulus family that is what 2020 is all about five riders working well together I don't know of a team Nathan that's worked harder to get better at team time trialing building team chemistry the craft of this discipline they have fully embraced and that's to their credit they don't shy away from the hard work look at Bacchus now flogging herself like a rented mule that's due back in half an hour <laughs> And I'm wondering there, between the riders, was that Bacchus trying to glue it back together as Mezlikov went to the front? I think that's what happened there. Bacchus did her job, brought the rest of the riders back up to the wheels of Reznikov as Reznikov pulled through at six watts per kilogram. They're on the hunt. This is looking very similar to the Hino situation. And what's really interesting in the background story here is that Bacchus has ridden with half the team over on Hino when it comes to socks for watts on the Thursdays, right? It's like... This rider has all the inside information, you know, you know, and a lot, a lot of experience. She's been amongst the top riders in the Zwift platform and then is picked up by 2020 in order to be a part of the education when it comes to getting 2020 up to speed. Kolchinski, obviously another rider picked up recently with a lot of strength in the world of Zwift and coming up through the Zwift, but she didn't race with Sox Watch. She didn't race amongst all of these other esports well, riders for years on end. Bacchus, though, she's been amongst it, and she's gotten the education. She brought it to 2020. So Kolchinski's the story of a rider who's never raced a bike. Now, she obviously has ridden outside, but has never raced outside. You can see her form is so entirely different on the bike than her teammates, who are you know pro professional bike racers uh, for all intents and purposes. She's a professional athlete now. It's just really amazing to see how far she has come in this sport. I mean, she is absolutely one of the greatest stories I've seen as uh, she gets ready to represent the United States at the World Championship. Talk about taking the fast track to the top of the sport. So now we're going to jump in with the Swedish Swifters here now, Nathan, a team that's always going to be in contention. So I'm being told that they're changing to 2024 on January 1st. So I apologize. I'll go back to 2020 then, getting out in front of my skis a little bit. <laughs> It's a good call, though. I mean, the next up is going to be 2024 after we get done in, uh, hopefully, in 2021, depending on how it happens. So, 
still a good call, and uh, there have been, you know, uh, we are always looking forward. So I raced like a girl there, 2258 currently through check mark two. I believe that's going to be on the 17 kilometer Westminster. We'll have to wait and see how it ends up playing out a little bit further down the road. Uh, 1651. Now we see those time gaps really starting to open up, though, as we really get into the business end of the race here. Uh, we do see who is going to be on, you know, dominating out here. As we do see the next checkpoint for Priority T as they come on through. We'll have to wait and see how that ends up playing out. But Turbo Fearless really off the back. Here's Priority T. They just came through. They're still in top five now at this point. Boy, I think you might see a new fastest Evoke. time once. Yeah, once this updates for Evoke, I think that my guess is that's going to be a new fastest time as they are absolutely killing Ooh. it out there. It's like a but girl's looking... flying, though. Look at that. And look at that, you're right, Evo coming in at 23 seconds back, so I race like a girl, absolutely, credit where credit is due, Nathan, they've got the fast time at 22.58, Kiss Racing only 16 back, that's going to update though, no pins, R3R now, your new silver standard at 10 seconds back, and that'll continue to update, but you know, Nathan, I race like a girl has got to be feeling really good because this check comes more than halfway into the race. 31 kilometers. Time taking off your third rider. We're back in with Arrow. The Bree show. Yeah. yeah. This is the Arrow. Yeah. And look. Oh, look at this. We barely saw any time come through between even Evo just a moment ago. Yeah, they're so going to catch. Now Arrow, though, jumping in. But I race like a girl. Where is this coming from? This is a team on the absolute fire this week. They're currently sitting in eighth place. They are tied, it looks like, for eighth place at 65 points between them and Swedish Swifters. This could be one of those situations we talked about uh, where they can make a big jump with, a, with a, an amazing result. We'll see what happens. There's a lot to come through. 30 seconds, though, and I have a feeling that 2020, they're going to be right. Well, they're a little further back, though, I think, from Hino. So that maybe slot in with I Race Like a Girl, or maybe I Race Like a Girl have a walkaway ride this week. All right. So we are looking then at a new fast time here, 22:28, the fast time for Hino Racing. They are doing research on what happened with the 2020 start. So, Nathan, it sounds like you were on to something there. So we'll get that information out as soon as we have it here. Um, I can see that they do make some adjustments on the fly. We're getting a look now here, though. Hino Racing 2228. It's going to be almost a half minute back to I Race Like a Girl. And to be honest, that's no surprise. That's still a great ride for I Race Like a Girl to be in front of Arrow, who's clearly uh, motivated today. The Australian team, no pins, R3R, sitting at 40 seconds back i should mention arrow at 35 and then rounding out our top five right now is going to be kiss racing at 46 evo sitting at sixth at 53 back so we still have a ways to go here but nathan it looks like hino being hino yeah solid ride here so far waiting to see if we can get some time coming in from 2020 but i have a feeling it's going to be a little bit where we keep some reorganization around all of that but uh, Hino here, 22-28. I raced like a girl. Amazing ride. Now, Arrow, though, uh, holding on steady and showing why they are in third place overall. No pins are 3 are Currently in fourth place uh, overall as well. Trying to hold on to that spot. Uh, Cyrus, the pros closet there, 105 back as you do see Evoke. Now, taking a little bit of a back seat there, uh, Cyrus, the pros closet to Evoke. Evoke, though, not with the kind of ride that I was necessarily expecting. Yeah, me either. From them me either. on the day. Yeah, I thought they'd be top three today, Nathan. I guess it's not over, but uh, I expected a little more from them. But, you know, you never know who's going to have the legs on the day. And also, uh, because we're not with each team for the entire ride, you don't know what trouble spots they went through, uh, what they had to navigate. So we are right now, again, looking at a 22-28, the fastest time waiting for that time. Oh, 2020 in at 116. That might adjust, though. So I'm going to wait till I hear from headquarters exactly what to make with that time, Nathan. So don't put too much value into what we're seeing. That might be right, but I have a feeling we might adjust that back by a minute. We'll see. We'll see. All right. But it uh, looks like we're in with I Race Like a Girl here. Yeah, solid ride here from Rye Race Like a Girl. Really a standout ride, in my opinion, this week from them. Something that I was, you know... With where they're standing on the leaderboard, we've seen solid rides from them in 
the WTRL TTT on Thursdays. We've seen them in that top three situation often there, really trying to even get a win a lot of times here. So uh, it just hasn't been able to translate into the Premier League yet. So perhaps they kind of figured some things out, put the right cogs on the wheel here, and uh, put the right riders in. Maybe did a little bit more homework specifically on this course, or Riding with five riders might be something they're just not used to about the order. You know, it's a little bit different. You take five instead of, you know, instead of the eight. So I have a feeling that they've done something here that's a little bit different. And this is a standout ride here from I Race Like a Girl. And I think this is going to really put them into a solid spot this week because they may be able to take over that seventh or even jump up to fifth place because Evo can cry already tier at 70 points. I Race a Girl 65. And I really, and I mean, Evo can cry RDT not having nearly as, as good of a ride. This could jump them up five points and put them into that top five situation. Solid, solid effort here for my really slicker girl. The splits between start times at 30 seconds today. As we take a look at Lenny Ramsey, Amanda Wendorf, Meredith Kessler, Carly Johan, and Tamara Jewett, I'm hearing that that time is correct. 116 back for 2020. So they are definitely not having the ride. I'm sure uh, it sounds like it was a stressful start, to tell you the truth. That doesn't bode well. Uh, I was in a team time trial once at the Coors Classic, Nathan, with the Irish national team at the Olympic year of 1984, where the, not only did the team crash in the middle of the team time trial, but then the follow car got left in gear while they were servicing the team and ran over a rider's bike and crushed the rear wheel. So nobody could have a worse race than that one out there. But it sounds like not a great start for 2020 out here today. So 116 back is what we're reporting. So they were the second place team coming in. That's going to be a big move if they can't make up some ground because points are distributed 20 for the winning team. So they're sitting in second. They're going to be concerned. They could give up a whole bunch of spots if they can't move forward today. Brie Wilson now pulling on through at 5.0 watts per kilogram. Dropping off, it looks like, one of the riders, Lisa Jacob. At this point, it might be... Oh, it's a tough call. It's a really tough call because there's a downhill that's about to happen. If... They don't want to wait up for Jacob, though. Playo and Wilson need to just press on. Jacob needs to just get up and out of the saddle and do everything she can. But on this climb, so much time can be made up. And the reality is, is you just let that rider go and take the speed over the top because this is precious seconds. You could end up with a 5 to 10 second gap that was not there prior if you do not just press on. Denny Petten and Dow to the front, they're doing exactly that. And it's going to be the downhill section in just a moment. Johan. It looks like you as well as Kessler said, time to press on. This is the closing, uh, well, we're into the closing, I think, 8K to go at this point. So there's a lot of racing yet to go. But these may be the two, three strongest riders. And they may just, Johan might just have to say, look, we need to move on with this. We cannot wait up because we have a ride of our lives ahead of us. I agree, Nathan. That's the toughest decision that you make is if you have a rider that's really struggling, it's not tough at all. They make the decision for you by just they can't hang on. But if you have a rider that just is skipping pulls and is right on the limit, but you think might come good, you know you're going to want them later in the race. So that is the decision. But there it looks like now sometimes this can be slightly deceiving here, but it looks like we're seeing another catch being made again. You should, today on this course, 30-second intervals rather than the one minute that we've been using in the previous team time trials here. So we should see a little more back-and-forth action as we're going to start getting splits coming in from uh, the Lower Thames Street. That's 24 kilometers in to this 31-kilometer race, and that's the checkpoint that we're talking about. And it looks like Vision with our fastest time right now, Nathan, at 33.26. Big well, Vision just moved down just now. Just moved down just now. So I raced that girl just came through. So there we go. Uh, they passed Fearless. a couple of teams. Now it's gonna be Saris. Yeah, Nathan, I think that I raced like a girl must have caught at least one team, maybe two teams out there. They're flying they today. Like they're about to catch TFC, I think. I think they're about to catch TFC right ahead of them. That's going to be the yellow kit just ahead, I believe. Now, they have a little opportunity here to use some motivation with that team ahead of them and this little 3% uphill grind. Uh, they could give a little kick, close the gap, and go right on by through that speed through, with, with some speed on the downhill in just a moment. There, there are a couple of little uphills, actually, at the start of this London course, actually. So let's we'll see if they, uh, they're going back through the start of the um, London 
area, uh, start pens area is just to the left here in just a moment for our uh, no pins R3R as well as where I race like a girl just went through. And that start section does have these little bumps in it that you can gain some speed uh, as you do kick over the top of those 1 to 3% grip. See, this is what I'm talking about here. Another little bit of an uphill. I believe this is a false flat through here is Johan. They're missing one though. Where Maybe is Maybe just off camera, rider? I'm thinking. I have a feeling just off camera. We will see here. As they, I mean, they look good. We, let's go ahead and talk about what we do know right now. 33.26 is the fastest time for I race like a girl. It's 31 seconds back to Kiss Racing. Saris, the pros closet now in at the third fastest time. They're 41 seconds back. Vision at 52, and you go to a minute 08 back to Team Swedish. Let's talk to the pictures that we're looking at right now. So we are seeing it looks like this racing team still sitting in a solid second place overall over Sars Pro's closet. Lots of, uh, I think, struggling going on here. That's what happened. A rider kicked off the front. That, that, whoever that was, you know, so was it Jewett? Was it, obviously it wasn't Johan here, but there was a rider who tried to pull the rest of them through those that, that, that next section. It was just too much. I race like a girl may be slowing down, though, because of the disorganization. One of the riders, they're just so strong, trying to pull everybody through. It ended up breaking things apart, though, more than helping. And we'll see if they can hold on to that top spot. We're well, not the top spot, but even the seconds that they had gained over some of their competition because Evoke is chasing them, Arrow as well. So it be interesting to see as Arrow still have plenty of riders with them through here. And... There's some sections on the course and these, it, you know, those little undulations I was talking about through this along the river town. And then you do have uh, the uphill grind into the square and then the downhill after that. Those extra bodies through those sections are so key to making huge amounts of time and speed. We'll see if it pays off for Arrow keeping everybody together. Yeah, that really is the secret to their success is very few teams will have five riders. As a matter of fact, not that many teams have four riders when you get to this point in the race. So there's our fastest time now, 32.28. So almost a minute quicker than Arrow Women's, the team out of Australia. I race like a girl still holding on with a top three ride right now. No pins in at fourth and Evo with the latest data that we have sitting at 123 back in fifth. Getting a good look at the gold standard. Again, this is the team that has not missed a step throughout the ZRL, the Zwift Racing League, as they're looking to continue their run for a perfect score here after six of eight races. So we're getting down to the business end, and this team, again, they just don't miss. Williams Looking at the entire squad front, here. That... Look, I'm coming from her. White Law, arms up in the air. Is she saying, come on? Oh, is she trying to get breath? I think, she's, I think she's trying to get as much oxygen as she can to the lungs. I think that's what that was. I think that's one of those classic situations where if you put your arms up into the air, it opens the lungs up more and you can actually get more oxygen into the legs then. That was interesting to see after taking a big pull, trying to bring the heart rate back down. Something that you uh, probably only see in indoor racing, actually, from riders. Yeah. Yeah. That was an interesting point, too, how deep you can go in your pain cave. Uh, I mean, it's been well covered about the different techniques and trying to keep yourself cool and, and all of those things. But also, one of the big differences is is that uh, you don't have to have the hand-eye coordination going. You can just make watts like a robot, and you don't have to worry about steering your bike or not collapsing at the finish, allowing riders to even go that much deeper. We look at the aero team was having one heck of a ride out here today. Bree Vine, who Nathan has noted is one of the top riders in esports today. Bree Playel, Jenny Pet 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 Sorry there. Lisa Jacob and Bree Wilson. That's the squad that we're looking at racing down under. Yeah, and this is uh, another ride that we really need to keep an eye on here because they are sitting in top three overall. They are at risk a little bit here to lose some points to some of these other teams that are on the come up. Um, Priority T, Evoke, I'm not sure they're having the kind of ride that's going to be able to challenge them, and I think Arrow are going to be able to hold on to a top three spot. Maybe, depending on how things play out with 2020 here, uh, they may be able to overtake 2020. This could be a ride by Arrow that's going to get them into the top two, but it's not going to challenge this. 20, I mean, I know 
so far. They've won five races. They're going on for number six here. They're sitting at 100 points at the top, 120 at the end of the day, most likely. here, And they are about to catch Arrow out on course, it looks like. So second place, maybe at the end of the day for Arrow overall. But this is just showing what kind of a team Hino is as they catch Arrow. If you were to look at the, the three most significant things about this first ever Zwift Racing League season, I would start right here. This team that has been perfect throughout the series, I don't know if they're going to be able to continue, and that's why we're going to have them race the next two rounds, but it has been really impressive to watch this, and here we go. Now, this is a really different story when you watch catches at this point in the race, Nathan, because uh, these are two of the fastest teams. That gap then right now is only 30 seconds as you watch them making the catch here. It'll be interesting to see. They should go right by here. A little bit of a surge from Hino. And they'll be cleanly through. Wow. Just like that. Bob's your uncle. Yeah, now Neilan here taking a little bit of a pull at the front. Seven wasp pilgrim at the front. This is what we're talking about, the kind of effort that you're going to need to see from every one of the riders on the climbs. Look at the evenness between them all. This is what you need when it comes to a team having the cohesion to have a dominating performance at whatever level you're riding at. Everyone has to be able to either match or be just under what that top rider can pull on through when it comes to the climbing. Jackie Gobby, Mackner, Hall, this is going to be vision here. Three riders left. The suicide poles are over. All three have to come to the line, Dave. It's going to be a sprint now into the last 500. Yeah, and this is it. Just start galloping now. Jackie Godby, one of the riders that will represent the United States at the World Championships in less than a month, so she's going to be happy with the form. It looks like she's having it. She's going to bring them home. So they're not going to split this one up. Nathan, it looks like these three will be uh, locked in formation as there is the finish arch, the gantry, as we call it. This one's done and dusted. Our first teams are finishing now here at the greatest London flat, 31 kilometers, done and dusted. Yeah, and here we go with Godby. Still leading things out. Obviously the stronger rider on the day here for Vision as she pushes the 6.5 watts, 465 watts, 190 beats per minute. They're coming from Ochner. She looks to hang on. 181 for Godby and Green Hall there with a 181. Just going to show how incredibly difficult. Did you see how long those heart rates were sitting there? That's yeah. got to be one wow. of their, I mean, <laughs> that's got to be so incredibly painful. Gives you an idea of what kind of a workout this is. Now, the Louis that we're seeing, Melanie King, Rebecca Lineker there, Isabel Bear, 194 beats per minute. They're team fearless as they make their way to the line. Fearless maybe having a good day here. We'll have to wait and see what kind of uh, effort they were able to pull off. Yeah. They were currently tied for 14th place overall with Turbo. And that was their battle. Uh, 4402 there, there for Vision was the time that we're going to have to be watching as uh, for the top spot. Uh, out there. I have a feeling that Fearless is going to come in a little ways behind that as they make their way to the line. Yeah, you always look for those outlier rides, the teams that make a big jump up. And uh, let's see if Fearless is that squad here today. We'll continue to update times from the finish line here as it's not going to be long till we've got everybody home here as we compacted the race out here. And this is going to be TFC. You can see Nathan kind of using that technique. Just go ahead and open it up. and We'll get everybody across the line, and that will be our finishing time there. Next up is I Race Like a Girl as we take a look. And there's Sars. Oh, this is a good ride from Sars the Pro's Closet here, Nathan. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see how it ends up playing out with Sars. Like, was, did I Race Like a Girl make a catch? Or did Sars the Pro's Closet... Hold on. I'm not sure. I have a feeling that I raced like a girl perhaps made a catch. Here comes Canyon. Mary Wilkinson there. She's going to have a little bit of a kick to the line. Probably the strongest rider left on that team here as it is going to be a solid 45 seconds up there for I raced like a girl. So I raced like a girl. They had a walkaway ride here, a breakthrough ride out here today. And now Canyon here. We'll see what kind of champs they were able to pull off. I have a feeling they dropped. They, well, they, I know they dropped a few riders out there today. And, uh, you know, I think they struggled a little bit through some of the climbs as I did see things breaking apart earlier. At this point, you really feel like you're pedaling through wet cement out there with the amount of lactic acid that these riders have in their leg. Strong ride from Canyon here as they will punch through the finish gantry here. Done and done on a big day of racing out in London. So 31 kilometers finished. This is going to be KRT coming in hot now, Nathan. Illy Gardner right on the front. 
There it is, Illy Gardner leading it out. And we'll see if they were able to pull something special off today with her leadership out there today. Jaren Bird, Christian Pohl now next across the line is going to be Team Turbo. They were maybe caught by a Kiss Racing Team. We'll see in just a moment. I think they were because look at that time coming on through at 2164, just a little ways back from my race like a girl. So I have a feeling Turbo, yep, 358 is going to be the time for Turbo now as Swedish Swift Racers come on through. Wow, we are really moving through these finishes. What a great job we're doing there. Is This is going to be no pins coming. There's Lou Bates, another one of the standout riders. She deserves extra mention as well this year, Nathan, without any doubt, as Lou Bates is going to bring no pins home here. Should be a solid ride from this team. You see how many teams are finishing with three today. No surprise. Yeah, with the, with the, you know, we did say it was greatest London flat, but I have a feeling that with all the little bumps and rises and then the little the climbs that are actually in here made it a very difficult course. Evo, coming through a solid time, I believe, wow. as well, as they were just a few seconds back. But here's Hino almost catching Evo as well. Holy How cow. many teams did Hino catch out there today? And did they drop? No, it looks like they're finishing maybe all together. We'll have to wait and see as there's a pull through at the end even solid sprint to the line as they caught arrow as well that's arrow finishing right now i'm not sure if Hino had four or five one thing's for sure evoke did and there's not going to be many teams that put that together here today 2020 they're going to be making a run at it now so this is our last team out on course right now nathan and they're going to be fighting for every second out here the points really i think the points matter for this squad more than any other team out there today they're in a real fight right now now, quick, quick mention here with Arrow. I race like a girl. That section across, along the river cost them a massive amount of time. They dropped a few of their riders as well as they left Surrey Hills, and it ended up punishing them in the end. Look at how much they fell back by. It was supposed to be a breakthrough ride. They were unable. Maybe they went out too hot. Maybe they had disorganization. I have to wait and see how it ends up playing out. But I have a feeling, rather they race like a girl, they kind of let one go when it comes to the opportunity that they were faced with there. 2020, wow. They came what back a, a lot. Even after, wow. Holding on, 2020, keep themselves in second place overall if that ends up playing out like that. Yeah, uh, really solid there in the back half of the race. Let's take a look then as this is it for Greatest London Flat. High no, perfect. 4139 that makes it six out of six for a total of 120 points we'll get to that in a moment as let's look at our top 10 today with wow well nathan you called that one great job arrow women's team ending up in second that is huge for the australian squad no pins takes third today 2020 boy they really did a good job of recovering from some uh, what could have been a rough day it turns out to be not so bad at all fourth place there I race like a girl in fifth, Evoke in sixth, Kiss seventh, Saris the Pros Closet in eighth, Cryo RDT in ninth, and tenth place, only 223 out. You can see just one second from ninth and eight seconds from eighth. Every point matters for these teams, as we can even go a little bit deeper here with all of the teams that we had racing. What a day it was for the men and the women here after 31K. It was only 41 minutes and 39 seconds to set the standard in London. Well, I would have to say they are the standard, Nathan, with Hino. There's 11th for Team Swedish Swifters. It's TFC in 12th, Canyon Esports in 13th, Team Fearless 14th, and Turbo rounding out the top 15 here today. So, all right, Nathan, let's take a look back on what was an incredible day of racing here in the Swift Racing League. I think we're going to start with a look back on the men. Quick little look at the replays here as it is going to be Mikey Motrum, the powerhouse on the front, but he was so strong. He kept on breaking things apart for uh, Vitas Pro Cycling out there, and they ended up having a couple of technical difficulties. They were on such a solid ride as they got things back together, but it sounded like they had two riders drop out, so we'll have to wait and see how the results will play out. There's Bruce Bird, the Canadian, making his way to the front, as I call him the big bird in the community race, and drafted the <laughs> solid ride out there as well as they pulled on through. And, uh, you know, one of the big stories, though, is going to be Arrow. Look at how they were able to glue everything back together. The addition of Jay Vine to the team really pulled off some solid times out there as well for 
the Arrow team. On both the men's and the women's side of things, I think that they've got, well, there was a little bit of frustration probably from the first half of the season here. And I have a feeling that they really did some homework, came back from the drawing board, and they put together some solid rides, both on the men's and the women's side of things. See Smart now as you see him pulling on through four no pins as they make their way into the final few meters across the line. There is the finish line that each one of the teams saw as they did that classic sprint we're starting to see out on that classic section, of course, to the line. And remember, it was a 1% uphill gradient through each one of these spots. So this suffering that you're seeing right here as Pio Auto crosses the line uh, to try and get that time up against Sars Pro's closet as well as Canon Esports. But it was Canon Esports. They showed us how it's done out there today, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Nathan. Let's take a look at how it all shook out today in London is Canyon Esports with 115. They're on top of the table after six races for the men. Saris the Pro's Closet, boy, they gave it a real battle today. And they'll now just lose one point sitting in second. You can see, though, the gap a little bit larger back to P.O. Auto Ceramic Speed in third now with 101 points. And those are the only three teams that have passed that 100-point threshold after six races in our eight-race season. Evoke in fourth, Bolt in fifth, Team Swedish Zwifters in sixth, Callus Esports Racing Team in seventh, Arrow in eighth venus hanging on in the top 10 there venus pro cycling in well, so it looks like they're tied actually let's jump into page two here no pins in 11th dutch racing is 12th it's the world elite swifters at 13th turbo kiss legion trinity road racing team skyline and team ahdr that's your top 19 nathan it's been an incredible season we've got some more racing to look forward to but the women had quite a day out there as well. And that's one of the things that I love about the ZRL is it's really the, the attention, the focus is equally weighted between the two races. I'll throw it back to you as we take a look at what happened with the women today out in London. Yeah, and women's racing is absolutely taking off on Zwift. It's really amazing to see. Uh, we do see the replays coming on through here of a lot of the riders as they were finishing up. Now, Hino is the story of the day when it comes down to, and the expected story today, it is obviously the prediction out there. They've been so dominating, and this is going to be six for six for them, 20 points each and every time, as we did see Vic Nealon coming through. Again, the standout rider that has been showing what she's worth for that pickup on the team is going to be Caroline Williams. You know, at Lethbridge, though, as well, another rider that was picked up there showing as she took a lot of monster poles. And then there's the obvious there, Hanson, Whitelaw, Nealon. That was the high note domination. But there was a, another story that developed out on course out there today that was going to be Arrow as well on the women's side. They showed up and took down that uh, solid second place spot. But then I raced like a girl. We thought they were perhaps going to take over second place overall, perhaps be able to jump up in the standings, make a big leap from eighth place with 65 points to a little bit higher. But it just didn't end up playing out for them as they struggled along the river. Well, you can see what's happened here, though, is Hino, again, they don't miss. Perfect at 120. But here's the story heading into the final two weeks. It's going to be a battle royale. So 2020, they do an amazing job. So if I was reading those splits right at one point, they were back to 6th, 7th, 8th place, somewhere in there. But they fought back to 4th on the day. And that's good enough to keep them in 2nd with 108. But you can see Arrow made some inroads. Nobody puts Baby in a corner. And Arrow moving up into third. No pins in fourth. Now, and again, that's the 100-point threshold that we're looking at. You then go to 85 points for Evo. Kiss Racing Team in sixth with 83. Well, only one point back there to Cryo RDT. Saris the Pros Closet now in eighth. They're tied at 75 points with Team Swedish Swedish Zwifters. And then I race like a girl. Boy, they had a great ride. Standout ride today. Nathan, when we get with O.J. Borge for the world of Zwift, I think that'll have to come up. TFC at 11th, Canyon Esports in 11th, excuse me, tie for 11th at 55 there. So that puts us at 13th of Baker's Dozen for Vision E-Racing with 54 points. Then Team Fearless Turbo and Velocity Vixen rounding out our top 16 teams in the Zwift Racing League. So, Nathan, when you look back, this might be the best day of racing that we have seen. Uh, some teams got put up uh, into the corner. They fought their way back. Hino continues to put on a display of excellence for us. And in the men's race, I think every week we're finding a new team. But certainly today, I have to give it to the Australians, the Aero teams, really, on men and women, as you said, represented incredibly well. 
Yeah, on the men's side especially, I think that we really saw everybody come and show up with their, what they have to bring to the table. I think some of the other weeks there were either either a mechanical issue that was going down uh, with one of the teams, uh, as well as maybe not showing up completely used to a TTT. A lot of these uh, teams have not done a TTT as the team that they are or just haven't really done one, especially Arrow, uh, you know, I would say on the men's side of things. So really cool to see what played out there. Uh, both on the men's and the women's side of things, we're really starting to see how things are going to play out at those top spots. We're starting to also see how things are going to play out at those bottom spots. Remember, there's some competition at the bottom here to not be eliminated from the Premier League as well. This isn't just about what's happening at the top. It's also about holding on to a spot in and amongst the Premiers. Uh, so that's obviously something. Now, speaking of those spots, the Zwift Community League, uh, uh, the WTRL in the, in the community side of things with ZRL, that is all going to be broadcast all the zones over on Zwift Community Live. Uh, make sure to be checking that out. That's going to be starting at, uh, we're looking at 3 a.m. actually here in the U.S. of A. for the APAC. But, um, you know, that is a conversation also about those bottom spots in the Premier League because as teams are eliminated, you have uh, teams in the Community League that are going to be looking to move up. So be on the watch out for that. That's, I mean, obviously a huge competition going down that they're going to be trying to battle and get their chance to try and take on Heinel, take on 2020, take on Arrow in the Premier League. Yeah, there are a couple teams, Aeonian, uh, Sox for Watts, that are in that exact conversation. There's incredibly exciting racing going on on Tuesdays. As Nathan mentioned, it goes around the globe. So wherever you are, come and join us. I hope that you race in the Zwift Racing League as we will have a second season coming up in 2021. But we're down to the brass tacks of this year. And as Nathan mentioned, teams looking to get promoted, teams looking to hold on, or teams looking to be our outright champions here in the Zwift Swift Racing League. It has been a tremendous amount of fun. This discipline of team time trialing is seeing an incredible resurgence right now. And I look forward to seeing you on Friday with the World of Zwift as we'll have a chance to look at the entire uh, encapsulating world of the sport as Nathan, this has been a great day. Team time trialing. Yeah, World of Zwift. Uh, we're going to be having O.J. Borg, obviously Christian Armstrong will be back with the Coach's Corner, uh, analysis of the racing, as well as everything that's going on with racing out on Zwift. World of Zwift, check that out on Fridays. Next week, we're going to be out back in France for the points race format, and Matt Stevens and Hannah Walker will be carrying you through all of that next week, Monday here on Zwift Live for the Premier League. Uh, so, guys, this has been absolutely awesome. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We've had a ton of fun for the TTT. If you want to check out some more racing of TTT across all the time zones, something that's more regional as well that you can check out in your time zones, we've got APAC you know, happening. We also have EMEA happening uh, for the European time zones, and then as well as the Americas all day tomorrow on Zwift Community Live. Uh, lots of different talents coming on. Me and Dave are going to be covering a lot. We've also got Anna Russell, Kate Bates coming on in as well. So it's going to be a ton of fun all day racing. And then if you haven't done a TTT before and you liked what you saw, you, you thought, wow, this is interesting. WTRL's TTT on Thursdays is the open community that you can also jump into with the team. Registration closes on Wednesday afternoon, Central Time. So be on the watch out for that. Head on over to WTRL.Racing to go check that out. Maybe get your own team in. Maybe we'll see you in the Zwift Racing League doing a TTT with that team in the next season as well. So that's going to be it us here, though, over on Zwift Live. I'm Nathan Gareth. This is Dave Toll. And we'll see you tomorrow for the Zwift Community League. As always, everybody. Right on.